All right, my dear students, the topic for today is not for profit organizations, also known as clubs and societies. Now, not for profit organization, dear students, are organizations which are made, which are created with the intention uh, not for creating profits, but, for, but with some other intentions, such as provision of some sort of services or maybe promoting education or maybe promoting uh, sports or some recreational activities, movie or drama or something like that. Or maybe healthcare services or some charitable okay, organization. Ji, beta. Can't. All right, beta. So these are created uh, with the objective not to create profits, instead to provide some service to the society, maybe in the form of healthcare or maybe education or maybe some uh, sports or recreational clubs. So these are known as clubs and societies or not for profit organization. Okay, now the aim of organization is not to create profit, but to provide some other service to the society. So the question here arises, do these profit organizations uh, earn profit? Yes, they can earn profit. And most of the time they earn huge amounts of profits. And the example of which is maybe uh, your organization, maybe Pearson, okay? So Edexcel organization, Pearson, or maybe CAIE, Cambridge Assessment, International Education. These are also not for profits. So don't do they charge heavy fees. Yes, they do charge heavy fees. But this organization was not created with the intention to earn profit. Secondly, the profit that they are earning from charging for their services, this profit could not be withdrawn by anyone. There are no owners. There are no shareholders. And as such, there is no concept of drawing. There is no concept of uh, dividend, okay? So all of the profit that they are earning would be reinvested for the same activity or for the same cause, okay? So maybe there is a, a foundation hospital, cancer hospital, and the objective of which is to provide uh, suffering uh, patients uh, the treatment of cancer. So whatever fees they are charging for the treatment of cancer would be reinvested to build new hospitals or to build new facilities in the existing hospitals. Okay, so no one can withdraw this money and no one can say that I have invested this much amount in the hospital and I am the owner of this hospital. There is no concept of ownership. There is no concept of uh, drawings or dividends in such organizations. Okay. So we have, we have learned what does a not-for-profit organization means. Now let us see how does the accounts of a not-for-profit differ from that of a profit-making organization. So but the first thing that we are going to learn in a not-for-profit organization is to prepare an income statement. An income statement of what? Uh, maybe a refreshment. The examiner uses the word refreshment or canteen or cafe or maybe shop. Okay, these are the different words used by the examiner. So refreshment or canteen, as you may be aware that in uh, most of the organizations, there is some sort of shop or cafeteria. So we need to prepare a separate income statement for that cafe. Uh, the examiner will use the word cafe or cafe uh, cafeteria or maybe refreshment or maybe canteen or bookshop or wine shop or any such name can be used. So there is a very simple regular income statement format to calculate this. Now, the thing to remember is that that all of the things relating to canteen would come here and no thing other than canteen should come in this income statement. So sales or revenue should also relate to uh, the sale of refreshments. OK, then cost of sale also should be for the refreshments or canteen. Uh, how we calculate cost of sale first of all beta we have opening inventory then we need to add purchases purchases also should be for the cafe then we need to deduct the closing inventory opening add purchase less closing becomes cost of sales and and if we deduct uh, sales and cost of sale the difference of which is known as gross profit and when we'll be writing gross profit we will only be writing gross profit if there are some expenses that relate directly to 
cafe if there is no expense that is termed as a cafe expense then we do not need to write gross profit instead we would write uh, profit from refreshment directly okay but if there are any expenses with the name of uh, refreshment we will be writing gross profit first and then we'll be charging expenses that are relating to refreshment only maybe uh, rent for the refreshment area and uh, for example the examiner says that 70 percent of the rent uh, sorry 30 percent of the rent belong to the cafe so out of the total rent we just need to charge the 30 percent of that and the remaining rent would needs to be charged in the club's income statement that we'll be learning uh, in later classes then if there is depreciation relating to refreshment non-current assets maybe uh, an oven is used in the canteen area okay to uh, the warm of the food and this uh, depreciation for the microwave oven would be charged to what uh, canteen income statement all of the expenses relating to canteen should be charged here and the final answer would be profit a loss from refreshment profit a loss from canteen so beta, this is how we prepare an income statement for what a not-for-profit organization canteen okay so in any uh, maybe hospital we have this cafeteria so we need to prepare income statement for this cafe or maybe a shop okay now let us see some questions that are relating to this shop and the questions that we do have the we have question number one uh, which is uh, with the name of welcome cricket club and page number 261 now let me read the question for you welcome cricket club has the following assets and liabilities now as you can see uh, 30th april 2011 beta it would be uh, end of the year and first may 2010 is basically the start of the year so we have n number of uh, balances given uh, the receipt and payment for the year now the another name for cash book in a not-for-profit is receipt and payment account receipts are the money that is coming into the business and payments are the outflows of the uh, the club okay additional information is also given what is the first requirement that we are going to learn today is we need to make a cafe income statement okay in a cafe income statement beta, anything that relates to cafe would be charged so let us see how we are going to solve this first part that is how we can calculate uh, the profit or loss from cafe so what we need to do beta, we need to make an income statement uh, of cafe and anything that relates to the cafe would come here first of all we are going to start with sales okay another name for sales is revenue and let us see uh, how much of the goods we have sold this year in cafe now as you can see in the receipt account uh, debit side we have a cafe revenue or sales and that is 90000 it is also known as cafe takings okay takings means sales now uh, the question here arises do we have any trade receivables uh, no better there aren't any trade receivables here uh, why because in the cafe there is no a credit facility okay whenever you need some food you just need to pay upfront money in order to get this food okay there is no credit that is being extended by the cafe to its customers so this means all of the sales is basically on cash so there isn't any credit sale okay first of all we have sales then we have cost of sales uh first of all we are going to start with opening inventory now how much opening inventory for cafe we do have we everything that is relating to cafe would needs <laughs> to be put in here first of all beta first made opening inventory it's 6500 inventory this means when we uh, the, the start of the year we had uh, food stuff of 6500 maybe uh, the packets uh, of chips maybe lace chips and the cold drinks that a uh, soft drink cans that we have in the fridge this is the opening inventory at the start of the year then we have bought some new inventory that is purchases now are there any purchases yes we can see in the payment side we have cafe purchases for resale so we have bought stuff worth 36000 this year so the question here arises do we have any trade payables no i cannot find any trade payables either this means there is no credit purchase and all of the purchases on cash 
So what happens, sir, if there is any credit purchase, if there was any credit purchase, then we need to uh, prepare a purchase ledger control account that we learned in the previous topic, single entry. And this club accounts also need to be prepared using the single entry principles. OK, uh, and that's the reason we are uh, learning this topic just after the single entry. OK, so the principles are basically the same. We need to prepare a PLCA purchase ledger control account in order to find the credit purchase. But if there is no credit purchase, we can just write the purchase immediately. This means all of the purchases are on cash. Then we have closing inventory for what? Cafe. Now le uh, let's see how much inventory is left at the end of the year. Okay, but it doesn't, uh, it's not necessary that all of the inventory is sold at the end of the year and our uh, shop or cafe is entirely empty. Okay. If any food uh, that uh, doesn't have a shelf life maybe or expiry, we can uh, uh, always sell it in the later part of the year that is next year. So the closing inventory that is left, we need to sell it in the next year. So therefore we aren't charging it in this year. It would be charged in the next year. So basically this should be our cost of sale. Uh, but there is uh, one more adjustment in this. And let us read this node one. In node one, it is saying, that wages are a direct cost of the cafe and should be charged to trading account. Now, what is a trading account, dear students? Uh, anything that is before gross profit, that is uh, sales to gross profit working is known as trading account. So just remember, whenever the examiner says anything that is direct, direct expense, okay, or anything that is direct wages, these direct costs should be charged before gross profit. So instead of charging this wages uh, in the expense part, we will charge wages here in the cost of sales. Now, how much wages we have paid to the cafe staff? As you can see, the uh, the chef uh, in the cafe uh, needs to be paid wages according to how many meals he or she may prepare. Okay, so therefore these are the direct costs. So the amount that we have paid to the chef is 28,800. And we also need to see are there any accrued or prepaid. Now, as you can see, cafe staff wages accrued. So accrued beta at the end of the year, uh, uh, APPM, the mnemonic that we learned in the previous topic as well, APPM accrued should be plus uh, at the end of the year. Okay. So the amount of wages that we have paid was 28,800. And we have learned the mnemonic APPM, accrued plus prepaid minus. So whether the accrued plus or prepaid minus, uh, this uh, mnemonic should be used at the end of the year. So what happens better at the end of the year, accrued needs to be added. And what about uh, if the accrued is at the start of the year? If accrued is being plus at the end of the year, then the accrued should be minus at the start of the year. Now, as you can see, the start of the year our accrued adjustment that we do have is 500. We need to deduct this start of the year. Now the total amount of wages for this year is 32,300. And if you are confused that why are we uh, adding one and subtracting the other, we can also make a T account for that if you want. And this is the wages account. So we have learned the topic accruals and prepayment previously. And in the expense account, we need to remember this mnemonic PAAP, prepaid, accrued, accrued and prepaid. Now there can be two types of wages. One is prepaid wages and one it can be accrued wages. Prepaid wages are very rare. Prepaid wages means that we have paid the staff earlier than they have worked for us. So the amount of the extra wages that we have paid them. So therefore it is an asset for the business. Now the opening for the asset would comes on the debit side and the closing must come on the opposite side and the opening for accrued would come on the credit side that it is a liability and the closing must come on the debit side. Now beta, whenever we are paying the wages, the entry would be wages or salary account would be debited why because the expense is debited by nature and the bank account would be credited so wages is being debited and the bank would be credited and what happens at the end of the year we need to transfer this amount to income statement now let's see how much accrued do we have whether the accrued amount that we have at start of the year was 500 and the end of the year it's 4000 okay so opening accrued is balance bd 500 closing is 4000 and the wages uh, that we have paid this year was 28,800. Now the entry would be wages would be debited and the bank would have been credited. Now what happens better wages is debit by nature. 
uh, by nature it is an expense and the expense is always debit in nature now what happens beta at the end of the year we needs to credit we need to credit this uh, wages account and we need to transfer it to where income statement now as you can see the amount is the same 32300 now uh, the for example in the cafe we are making pizzas okay so the ingredients that we have used to make the pizza maybe flour or yeast or whatever uh, cheese so these are the cost of the ingredients and this is the amount that we paid to the chef uh, who is preparing the uh, pizzas for us okay so the total amount uh, of cost of sale that is 70000 so we have sold the pizzas for 90000 uh, and that costed uh, the cafe 70000 now the difference between the two would be better a gross profit and we would only write gross profit when if there are any expenses relating to cafe and if there are no expenses relating to cafe we can just write profit or loss from cafe but if i have written gross profit then, then this means there must be uh, some expenses with the name of cafe expenses now let us see are there any expenses relating to cafe in the payment side although it's not clearly written that this rent or heat and light belongs to cafe and for this we need to read the notes in the notes the examiner mentioned the rent and heat and light are apportioned a portion beta we need to divide this amount and 40 percent of the rent and heat and light belongs to the cafe and the rest of the 60 percent belongs to the club so right now beta we are making cafe income statement and for that reason we need to charge 40% of the rent and heat and light to the cafe area. Okay. Now let us see the expenses better. I am charging the expenses. So the first of all, I have charged heat and light. So the question arises, how much heat and light we have paid this year? As you can see better, we have paid heat and light worth 18,000 this year. So we need to charge this 18,000. And what we need to do, we need to apply 40%. Okay. Because if there is, if there is no accrued or prepaid in it. So what happens, sir, if there is also accrued or prepaid adjustment? Uh, another question here arises, sir, if there is an, any accruals or prepayment adjustment, do we need to uh, adjust accruals or prepayment first or we need to apply 40% first? And better the answer for this is that we always need to adjust accrued and prepaid first, that is accrued plus and prepaid minus at the end of the year. And uh, it would be reversed at the start of the year. And then finally, after adjusting for accrued and prepaid, then we need to apply 40%. Okay. So if we applied 40% first and then we adjusted the accruals and prepayment, then the answer would be incorrect. Okay. What about the rent? For, for the rent, we also do the same thing. So the total of rent that we have paid is 21,000 and we just need to charge 40% of the rent and not the remaining 60%. Remaining 60% would be charged in the club's income statement and we are going to discuss later that how can we make the club's income statement so better all of the expenses that were relating to the cafe we charge uh, here and finally the profit that we have arrived to is profit a loss from cafe okay so this is the profit from cafe that we have calculated 4400 okay better there is another question on page number 273 with the name of w sports club now what we need to do here we need to make income statement for shop now instead of giving us the name cafe the examiner had preferred to give us the name as a shop let me read the question for you w sports club provides sporting facilities for members the club also runs a shop okay for the sale of sports clothing now all of the sports gear is being sold here in the sports shop okay so what requirement that we are going to solve now for now we are going to solve this part b in which we need to prepare an income statement for sports clothing shop okay we just need to prepare income statement and anything that is related to this shop would come here okay anything that does not belong to the shop wouldn't be charged here now but are you may be aware that whenever we make an income statement so the format for income statement is usually the same okay we are going to start with what we are going to start with sales okay income statement beta is always made in two columns we are going to start with sale now let us see beta how much sales uh, this shop has generated now see uh, the cash book here is named as receipt and payment account okay 
So there are some uh, difference uh, in terminologies in a not-for-profit. Not-for-profit doesn't uh, say it a uh, bank account or cash book. Instead, uh, refers to it as a receipt and payment account. Now, this is the debit side. The money is coming into the uh, club. And this is the credit side. That money is going out of the club. Now, as you can see, uh, anything that is relating to sports shop. Okay. Shop sale for sports clothing. Okay. We have sold the goods worth 2600 now the question here arises do we have any trade receiver so mostly we do not have any receivables in the shop or canteen okay because we are not uh, entertaining credit customers here and we are only uh, offering goods on immediate payment that is cash sale so we just need to write the sales and we do not have any credit sales okay all of the sales is cash sale so then we have a cost of sale first of all beta we are going to write opening inventory for shop now, do we have any opening inventory for shop? Let us see, see the inventories there uh, for sports clothing. Now, the opening inventory must be on the 1st May and the closing inventory would be on 30th April. Now, the opening inventory beta that we do have is 400. What about the purchase? Now, beta, although purchase is given shop purchase for sports clothing, we also need to make sure that there aren't any credit purchases. Now, as you can see, the trade payable is already given. If the trade payable is given better, this means the purchase must be on credit. Now, how to calculate credit purchase? We have already studied single entry previously. In single entry, what we need to do? We need to prepare a purchase ledger control account, PLCA. And PLCA is basically an account for whom? Account for suppliers. Okay, all suppliers. So we can make a purchase ledger control account that is supplier account. Or instead of doing that, we can also solve it directly using an equation that first of all, we are going to write bank. Uh, now, how much money we have paid from bank for purchases? We have paid for purchases worth $1,400 from the bank. Now, beta, this uh, trade tables or trade receivable is basically accrued. And we have learned that uh, accrued should be plus at the end of the year and it should be minus at the start of the year. Okay. In the start of the year, the rules would be reversed. Now, uh, ending accrued would be added and opening accrued should be subtracted. So this is basically the credit purchase amount that we have sold. So the, uh, can we solve it using a supplier account as well? Yes, we can also solve it using uh, by making a PLC account. And this is the account for all of the suppliers. Now, as you may be aware that supplier is a liability. So the opening balance would come on the credit side because liability has a credit in nature and the closing balance beta would come on the debit side. Now, beta, whenever we are buying the goods, uh, the purchase would come on the credit side. The, the entry would be purchase would be debited and liability would be credited. And whenever we are paying our supplier, so the entry would be liability would be debited and the bank would be credited. Okay. So the opening balance uh, for trade payable would come on the credit side and the closing balance must come on the debit side. Whenever we are buying goods from supplier, the liability beta would increase. And whenever we are paying our supplier for the goods that we have bought, then the liability would be decreased. Now, can we solve uh, it for purchase? Yes. Uh, as you can see, beta, the bigger side is obviously the debit side because there is one important figure that is missing on the credit side that is purchase and the purchase that we have found is 1340. So we also did the same here. Uh, we are adding up the closing accrued in the bank and we are subtracting the opening accrued. Okay. So this is the credit purchase opening add purchase then closing inventory is already given opening add purchase minus closing becomes cost of sale. Okay. If I better deduct the cost of sale from the sale figure, I am left with what? I am left with the figure of gross profit. Okay, we are only going to write gross profit when, whenever there are any expenses relating to shop. And if there are no expenses directly related to shop, then, then there is no need to write gross profit. Instead, we can just write profit or loss from shop. Now, let us see, do we have any expenses that are directly related to shop? Are there any expenses? Although it's not clearly written that wages or general expenses or rent belongs to shop. And for that, we need to read the notes. Now the notes uh, mentioned the wages include 900 for shop. Uh, now we are sure about it that there are some of the expenses relating to the shop. So we are going to name it as a gross profit. 
and we need to chart the shop expenses here first of all beta we have rent now let us see how much of the rent that we have paid so the total amount of rent that we have paid is 1150 and there is also accrued rent at the end of the year accrued rent beta means we have used this much of a uh, space and for which for which the rent has not yet been paid and the rent that needs to be paid in the future is a liability so what we need to do better we need to add up the accrued at the end of the year okay and there is no accrued at the start of the year we just need to add up this in 1150 and how much of the rent relates to the shop 20 percent of the rent and 130 dollar of the general expense relate to the shop okay so what we need to do first of all better you must remember that we need to adjust the accrued and prepaid and then we need to apply 20 percent okay so how much of the rent that we have paid we have paid 1150 and we still owe 100 to our landlord or landlady whatever whoever they are and uh, after that we need to apply 20 percent only okay so the remaining rent that is 80 percent shouldn't be charged here and this would be charged in the club's income statement and the club income statement we are going to learn in the next class and uh, which is known as income and expenditure account club's income statement and we are going to discuss that next class uh, what about the wages are there any wages that relates to the shop uh, out of the total wages that we have paid 1500 only 900 relates to the shop okay so what we need to do better we need to charge only 900 wages to the shop what about the general expenses here the examiner mentioned that 130 dollar of the general expenses also relate to the shop so what we need to do we need to charge these general expenses also the share of general expenses to the shop now better we need to add up all of the expenses relating to the shop and if we deduct the expenses from the gross profit we are left with what we are left with profit or loss from clothing shop okay so we have done this part b and we have uh, calculated the profit from the running the shop 